What's up everybody, it's Jacko here and right now I got another Fortnite video going over character customizations and strategies. Really quick, customizations. So you get to choose up to six different skin tones. You get to choose male or female. And you also, when you have enough reputation, you could buy a specific class outfit. In this instance, I have the Orochi outfit. And the one that you saw with the little horn, look horn looking things is an elite outfit basically only for Ubisoft employees and over here we have the palettes now you get to choose a wide array of palettes I'm only going to touch on the customization slightly because there's, there's a tons of videos so I'm just going to touch on certain things lightly so the palettes you can't change the way the palettes show up like you can't switch the primary color with the secondary and third colors uh, it's just however it is that's how you take it and then you have there you have engravings you could put different paint patterns and symbols on the chest back each individual shoulder however you want to see it you know work out to your specifications and how you want your player to look right here we have the uh, the armor pieces and weapons customizations so you choose with certain loot uh, after the battlefield which I'll go over to later you have a like a scavenging of loot and you get either new weapons new hilts guards uh, chest pieces all that other good stuff and each one offers a different stat as you can see with the green bar going up and down and so you know the hilt right here is giving me more hit revenge gain and the designs themselves are set but what you could do is instead of taking the one piece uh, uh, let's say it's a hilt or in, I'll just say the helmet right here instead of taking one helmet and having it only look that way with those certain stats you could take the look of the helmet and transfer over to another helmet with better stats you will lose that other helmet but you'll still retain the stats and the new look so that's pretty neat right there if you want to go for a very specific look without giving anything up you know right here we have all the different abilities each slot has up to three abilities some are passive some are active so you gotta kinda figure out what it is that you want to mess with and toy around with and each one obviously offers their benefits and downsides various cooldowns uh, some of the cooldowns are actually extremely long, like the longbow, that's actually a, a pretty long cooldown, but it is an excellent ability for when someone's trying to run away. Uh, so overall, so that's just me touching up on the customizations there a bit. Now you see the wreath over there above the number 2 in the center of the screen, and it says number 1. That is my renown level. Now my character level, my it's basically like prestige. And with that, you get different loadouts, so you could, on the fly, switch it up, you know, loadout 1, 2, or 3, which gives you different armor sets, abilities, and all other good stuff. Now, the big star in the middle where the 13 is, that is, I guess, well, you call that your armor level, or your uh, stats level, if you will. And it takes your armor, and your, your defense, and your attack combines them and it gives you that number so you have your character level your stats level and then you know in the game you have your in game level which you level up for the abilities which I went over in my previous video so if you have a defense level of 1 but a attack level of like 10 your total level there in the big star would be 11 yeah, it's pretty self explanatory there so now with this screen you'll see this was before the prestige mode and or not prestige mode but the prestige that I had and you see I only have the ability to choose one loadout and my character level or my stats level was only at an 8 there but now you see the one with the wreath everybody else all the other subclasses I do not have a prestige and I only have uh, the one loadout but right now when I go over into my uh, Orochi where you see the little wreath down there on the bottom uh, the character on the bottom right you're gonna see that I will have the option to go ahead and pick and choose which loadout that I want and I don't know if you could with every next renown level like renown level 2 do you get four loadouts to choose from 
five loadouts to choose from or if there are other bonuses that go along with it. Now you see I only have right there, I have a stats level of 12 for my loadout 1, stats level of 13 for my second loadout with different abilities and even then you can switch up the abilities right here before the match starts. But as I was saying, I don't know if with the renown because I have not seen any information on it yet, I don't know if with the renown levels if you will be able to unlock better equipment just by going up a level, uh, a renown level or if you're just going to get more ability slots, not ability slots, I'm sorry, but more loadout slots. Alright, so now for this next portion here in regards to the customizations, I am going to be getting into the stats overview. So right there you see the big stats level right there which is number 8 and you will see what is all combined. So for my arms, helm and, and biking chest that's all 4, combined that's 4 and my weapon, the, the blade, the hilt and the guard that also equals 4, so 4 plus 4 equals boom 8 and you can see what each stat gives you or what each piece gives you whether it be more defense or offense so again you, as far as customizations for this game goes there is an immense amount of awesome op, uh, customizations options yeah words are hard <laughs> now right here I'm gonna go over the strats and little tidbits so that guy right there tried to dodge to the to my right but if you swing horizontally you can still catch them like I did and kill them there is a quick chat and unfortunately I didn't get a whole lot of footage of me using the quick chat because I actually saw it a little bit late. But you could basically just you know, say thank you, sorry, or what have you and just mention to the your team, hey, you know, there's we gotta go capture A, we gotta go do this, we do that, and hopefully they'll listen. Now roles are very important, as you see there. It definitely helps out, gets you out of sticky situations. Uh, but like the previous guy before who I killed, if you dodge or roll in the wrong direction and they catch you, you'll die. There is a cooldown and it can be a bad thing. So right there I rolled away from the other attacker and into the his partner and since I, there was a cooldown, I couldn't get out of there. So a cool little strategy here is you dodge back when you're anticipating an attack, especially for the Rochi, and you just hit R1 for a light attack and it leaves them open because they whiff their attack. You could also roll forward like I did there, go into a guard break which completely opens them up and boom, just double tap the R1 for the light attacks and he's done. So you, you definitely have a wider range of strategies to use. What I like to do here, like I did in this instance, is I'm low on health, I attack the guy and I bait him away from the objective and then I throw a kunai to go ahead and disrupt him. But the problem is the kunai range, as you see here, it just landed at my feet. So it's hit or miss depending, I don't know, they gotta work on that. You can revive your fallen allies, however that does come with some risk as you see here. This guy comes and attacks me as soon as I revive, but your ally revives at full blown health, so it's pretty strong. Will they know that? I don't know, but you know, we'll see what happens. So there's the longbow. As <laughs> I know, I my character faced the opposite direction, but it, that just wanted to show off the longbow really quick, so you see how strong it is getting people running away. Now with the lock on, it definitely needs some fixing. Now you see this guy; he got knocked down. I swing to hit him. And I, I try to lock onto him, but instead I end up locking onto the guy way the fuck over there. I don't know why that is. I should have just been able to lock onto the guy, that one initially. But he did set a nail trap and I wasn't paying attention. And you see it is actually very strong. It depletes your stamina in an instance and you will die. I mean, you saw how much health I had. And yeah. Now there is no health regen at all in this game except for when you are in the objective, a captured of objective, or you have the samurai who puts down a little flag. And it takes about 10 to 12 seconds when you are at like zero health, like damn near zero health, and you will regenerate it all after about 11 seconds. Now when it comes to, boom, when it comes to executions, if you save your ally from being executed 
you can revive them. However, if they are executed in any way other than just a normal kill and you don't interrupt it, your ally is forever dead and they cannot be revived until they respawn. What I like what they did here with the scoreboard is they put the objectives first because it is an objective based game and that's obviously what is gonna, you know, get you the wins. Takedowns are cool, but objectives is where it's at. So the loot system here, like I mentioned earlier, after every battle, you scavenge the field for loot. And the better you perform by getting more objectives, takedowns, revives, all that other good stuff, uh, the better rewards you get. And the alpha, there weren't that many rewards because it's just the alpha, but you get the idea. So then it goes over your performance in regards to the game mode, the hero you use, and uh, for you completing the match. Now, there, uh, there's not a lot of info yet in regards to what each thing means, whether you get uh, more XP in completion for winning or in game mode for winning, or if one game mode is going to have more XP bonus than another, like duels or brawls. Uh, you know, brawls are the 2v2 mode. And with completions though, you see there you got the little coins, there's the steel, that's the only one you get uh, steel in right now, which steel again is used for purchasing upgrades for your uh, equipment and all that other good stuff. So what I'm curious to see is if any of these items will give you any sort of perks, like maybe you will have one that you attach, it might not give you that many best great stats, but you'll have it say like double in-game character XP or you know better loot chance by X percent. Little things like that. Haven't seen anything that mentioned yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if that was a thing. So that concludes my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you all later. Peace out, bro.